My name is Pamela Harris, and I'm a professor at Williams College. I don't think I was always good at math. I think I liked it, but I didn't really know what math was. I think it was just like the school type of math, right? Like learn how to multiply numbers with lots of digits or divide. And it took a long time for me to uncover really what math was. And so, so I think for a long time, I just kind of didn't really love it. And then there was that switch. And as I'm thinking about my courses in the fall, I am going over some of like my old calculus, you know, like the integral test for convergence of series. And then I felt like that flutter of excitement. And I was like, oh, I think this was one of those moments in my life when I like really thought math was so cool. Um, and so it, it took a long time to develop, but I, I fell in love with that. I feel like I kind of fell into this career. I got really lucky and had really wonderful teachers uh, during my early career who just kind of told me, take the next math class. And so I did. And, you know, people said, oh, okay, well, you know, you got to apply to a, a PhD program. And I was like, what is this thing? And, but I did. And so throughout my entire career, I kind of just fell into it. Like it never was like, you know what I want to do with my life? I'm going to become a mathematician. That was absolutely not like a thought in my brain. I knew I wanted to teach. Um, but then mathematics, like I said, I kind of fell in love with that. And I just by taking the next class and the next class, I kind of ran out of classes. And then eventually you do go to graduate school and get a PhD. And very naturally, the, the job that felt the most right for me, given that I wanted to be an educator, was becoming a math professor. And I think it's been much more recently that I've really revved up my own research that I finally feel like I'm this mathematician. Like, which is really terrible because I think, I don't think that you need to be a published mathematician to be a mathematician, but for some reason, like it took this long to like really feel it. And I think it was also just a, a sense of community. Like the more that I've had a larger math community, the more I feel like I belong to it. And so I, I feel like I am now a mathematician. I work in an, in an area called algebraic combinatorics. And so what that means is that I'm interested in questions that at the very heart are counting problems. And so things as easy to explain as if I have tiles of a certain shape and I have a floor of a certain dimension, in how many ways could I tile the floor so that no tiles overlap and that you don't leave a gap in between? Uh, and in fact, those kinds of questions have been then translated to other things that I work on, which are called vector partition functions. And so there's a way to look at writing vectors as non-negative integer combinations of a fixed set of vectors. And the way you should think about that is those fixed set of vectors are kind of like tiles. And then the vector that I'm trying to write as a linear combination of those is like the floor. And so I'm constantly thinking about problems that involve that kind of machinery. Um, and, and they're super fun problems. They're easy to state. They're actually very difficult to solve. Um, and they lead to tons of problems that I'm always really happy to explore with my students at Williams. And so they've led to tons of really fruitful collaboration with them. Um, and for me, that's been the part that's really exciting about my research, that I get to bring other people along that journey. There's definitely been a ton of struggles. Uh, academically, math is hard. And I failed my master's exams multiple times and eventually passed them, clearly, got a PhD. But those were really hard things to go through. Um, but I think the, the main lesson is that you have to kind of build some ability to persist, right? Like build some grit. And there's going to be times where I've worked on a math problem for, for years. And then all of a sudden, I share it with one of my really bright undergrads, and he solves the problem. And then I'm like, oh, oh, I feel terrible about myself. And then I have to reflect, like, wait, no, this is great. This is a problem I've been stuck on for five years. And my student and I were able to work on and develop it and, and solve the problem. And so there's those kinds of things, right? And most of the time, it's, it's about being confident in your own ability and not letting challenges derail you from what you're looking to accomplish. And so, yeah, you'll fail exams. Yeah, you might not get into the graduate program that you envisioned yourself getting into, 
but that doesn't mean that the road ends there. You just have to find a new avenue um, and, and find, again, I'm a big proponent of finding the right community so that you can thrive. So I, I think that's the, the big issue, right? It's like overcome those obstacles and like, don't feel discouraged, just keep pushing forward. I think one of my biggest accomplishments, I mean, for sure, finishing a PhD in math was huge. Uh, I'm actually a first generation college student. My, you know, I'm an immigrant to this country. I was undocumented. Um, so there was a lot of challenges and, and getting to this point where you earn this PhD was definitely a huge accomplishment. Uh, but more recently, I just got tenure and promotion. And so that feels really great too. Um, and, and I think the one thing is that there's always been these big accomplishments, but I think I also like to celebrate the small things, right? So like every time I get an email from a student that's like, wow, that exam was really hard, but there was a question in it that was so cool. Like to me, that's an accomplishment, right? And so I tried to also celebrate not just things that are, are about me, but also like seeing now my students go into PhD programs or their first paper acceptance. And so as much as some of these accomplishments are sort of mine and my own personal accomplishments, I think the ones that I'm the most proud of tend to be the ones for my students because I see them as continuing the work that I've done. And so that part just like brings me so much joy. My journey has been full of mentors at every step of the game from high school to you know college to graduate school to now. Um, I've been so, so lucky and so thankful to be surrounded by a group of friends and, and family and mentors who have done nothing but always ask me, like, what's next? And then gone out of their way to help me figure out how to reach that next step. And, and so, like, my entire life now is about how do I recreate that for my students and for those that are, you know, younger than I am who are starting on the tenure track. Um, who are starting their research agendas. And so it's, it's definitely like, I feel like I've come full circle. Like it's, it's now my turn. And so it's important as it is to build that community because I had it. Um, it's, it's just super rewarding to just move into that next part of my career where it's my turn to help build others up. I think for me, the most important part in this entire journey, uh, I think has been community. It's just been surrounding myself with people who have supported me and who I support and building relationships. That to me has been the thing that's kept me connected to math. As ironic as that is, it has never been the math that has kept me in math. It has always been the people. And so I think the message I would send is find your people because they will make a huge difference in everything you do.